Hey all, it's your host Matt here, and just letting you know, we really just don't talk about Captain Marvel for the first 12 minutes of this podcast, because Nathan fights a spider in his room, and it's just us commenting on it and talking about absolutely ridiculous shit, so, (laughs) I mean, if you want to listen to that, feel free, I thought I should include it, because some of it was, was pretty funny, but if you came for Captain Marvel discussion, skip right to 12 minutes, don't worry about spoilers, there's a clear indication when we do start talking about spoilers. So, thanks so much for listening, everyone, and enjoy the episode. Uh, Ten seconds. Um, That's a lot. Yeah. I thought it was like Shit. Five. Um. What? Um. Spider. Um. Blood. I mean. Oh, fuck. <laughs> uh, uh, I wonder what kind <laughs> of spider it is. Probably Daddy so... Lambert or something completely non threatening. <laughs> I didn't, yeah, I didn't know you had a thing for spiders, Nathan. <laughs> oh, he's got his headphones. Up. <laughs> a thing for spiders. Well, I may, maybe it was sparked by Spider Verse. Welcome back, everyone, to the Jaded Dragon Podcast with me, your host Matt. As usual, from the Jaded Dragon podcast, and with me, I have Ben, also known as Simmer's Face, and Nathan, also known as Spider Hunter. And right now, you can hear him falling over everything in his room. (laughs) What the fuck is going on? (laughs) Um, But regardless, this episode, we're going to be talking about Captain Marvel. We went to an early screening of Captain Marvel tonight, and we're going to give our initial reactions to the movie, and then we'll uh, notify you guys of of when we're going to go into spoilers, and then we'll go into a bit more of an in-depth discussion about the movie as a whole. So look forward to that as we continue to listen to Nathan try to fight a spider. We might cut some of it out, (laughs) because we don't know how much commentary we can give for it. I'll be back, guys. I'm just going to ask for some assistance from someone. (laughs) <laughs> I need to call the Avengers <laughs> Maybe Alistair Smythe and his spider slayers Spider slayers And he, um, Conan the Barbarian <laughs> Did you oh. ever, uh, play the Amazing Spider-Man video game? Nope, missed that one It was a weird but time I, I, where they I, were like It's a sequel to the movie Did you but ever then, play Sp- Amazing Spider-Man 2? <laughs> No, I didn't. Because that was the I same thing. it was thing, much worse. Except worse. Somehow, it was worse. Um, still after that spider, huh? I guess okay. no one around to help him. You just don't have shoe, a shoe? Just, just hit it, Nathan. You it's, still can't hear me. I've, it's disappeared. I can. Oh, yeah. Just oh. like I thought it would. And yet you still wasted everyone's time. <laughs> <laughs> it's scary. <laughs> I couldn't get... Jim was not here. Is uh, Jim your... Uh, <laughs> what's it called? You know. Neighbor? Yes, neighbor. Exterminator? Sure, that's what I said. Or went, wanted to say. Is Jim your exterminator? Who also happens <laughs> to be your neighbor? <laughs> <laughs> it's really convenient, especially for someone who hates spiders. <laughs> no, it's really the the dad from Hey Charlie. <laughs> Is it Hey Charlie? I it's don't probably know what you're Hey Charlie. About. Hey Charlie. It's a, it's a Disney Channel original show. Hey Arnold. Uh, hey Charlie. Or just Charlie. Um, there was a Charlie. Is it about a baby? Yeah. Charlie. Disney show. Mhm. Good luck, a Charlie. Bit past my time. Oh, okay. Good luck, Charlie. Yeah. That's what the yes, that is the name of it. That was a little bit past my time. I don't. Was he an exterminator? Yeah, his dad was an exterminator, and he tried to get his their older brother into the extermination business. <laughs> a classic tale. <laughs> it's like that episode of the Brady Bunch where uh, Greg, I think it's Greg starts working for uh, Mike and he has to de- deliver the uh, the f- important architectural files and he drops them or something. I think that plot was also in the movie. 
the sequel at least i don't think it's in the first one <laughs> the one where they have to save the house and he keeps showing the same house designs to each investor <laughs> <laughs> the this is my masterpiece <laughs> yeah yes that movie is very good yeah remember the bit with the dance number and they were wearing like power ranger suits or something <laughs> no, they're the Brady Bunch uh, The Silver Platters I don't know if they call themselves the Silver Platters in the movie But that's what they call themselves in the show They did that dance competition And they called themselves the Silver Platters Rather than the Brady Bunch <laughs> Which you'd think would I mean, you just, that's that would what, probably work That makes sense Yeah Wasn't it um, Uh what, who, who's the older, eldest Brady daughter? Uh, Greg, in, in terms of the kids. Daughter. Yeah, the daughter. Oh, eldest daughter, Jan. Sorry, not Jan, yeah. uh, Marsha. Jan's the middle. I just yeah, always think about Jan like because she's the best. Of Mar- Even though Marsha, no one thinks Marsha, about her, and that's why she's the best. Marsha. Remember when <laughs> that other girl was trying to like seduce Marsha the whole movie, but then Marsha's still from the 70s or whatever? That was funny. So she didn't know what lesbians were because they didn't exist in the 70s. (laughs) (laughs) At least not on 70s television. Exactly. Anyway, it sounds like Nathan is back. (laughs) Yes. And leading in from the Brady Bunch, remember when the cast of the Avengers did the Brady Bunch theme thingy? That that was pretty cool. When? I think they did do that, yes. Yeah, so I don't know if that's a point I think, of discussion, yeah, it was, but yeah. Wait, wait. It's when a, did, it's a, it's a segu, what? thank you very much. When did they Into do the this? main topic. It was it was just like Captain a Marvel. Thing. Yeah, it was a ca- it was a promotional thing where it's just like huh. the main six doing the Brady Bunch theme. Hmm. That's good. Don Cheadle was there. And he's like, "Hey guys. It's the Brady Bunch." <laughs> I'm Don Cheadle. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Don Cheadle. I'm Donald Duck. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I don't think you could understand him if you said that. But no, he, that's <laughs> Donald Duck's actual voice. It's Don Cheadle's voice. Wait, it's what? In Ducktales. So oh, oh. in Ducktales, there's a bit where he like Sorry. Donald Duck makes his, his Donald Duck noises, and then he gets like he someone I don't know something happens so that he's throwing he eats and someone he sounds like Don Cheadle because Don Cheadle does the voice of him. Uh huh. <laughs> it's back. Oh, oh no. no! Dude, it's probably not a problem at all. I mean, I can't see it, it but it's, it's sort of big. It's not tiny. So yeah, that means out, it's not out big. Of, out of, somebody, of ten, if somebody says a spider is big, it's not big. If they say it's huge, then maybe it's big. Like people always it, say spiders like are big medium. when they're not. It's it's look, a smaller side of. So medium. it's small. No, so it's yeah, not it's probably small. tiny. So look, look it's, out it's, out of ten, how serious is this problem, Nathan? I'm deathly afraid of spiders, and you know that. I, d- I just learned this, Nathan. Oh. But it's not the As- fear that's going to kill you. <laughs> no, it's the <laughs> It's literally over my bed. I- I'll be back. I'm getting Andrew. Uh, <laughs> what what happened to the other guy? <laughs> Greg? Joe or something? Greg? Joe, Joseph? Greg? Marsha? Yeah. Marsha? Bobby? Peter? Jan? Jan? Cindy? Marsha, Marsha, No, Marcia. it wouldn't be Cindy. Everyone talks about Marsha. <laughs> the bit where she's in the movie where she's just like twitching her head <laughs> she looks uh, like she's been possessed or something <laughs> what's her so name good. played the original carol just like, she's playing their, their grandma in the movie just walks up jam cut the crap <laughs> <laughs> so good um we can't get started without nathan oh wait yes we can because he didn't even watch it yeah he didn't fucking turn up because he's just ran out of money, huh? Although I think he Let's wants to get into the discussion, so we can, I don't know, pick apart what we're actually talking about here. Yeah. Well, I mean, I already kind of introduced that we're doing a non-spoiler bit at the beginning here, and then a spoilery bit later on, so... Sure. I don't know. Well, Andrew's also yeah, not I assume here. he'll want to be more part of the general discussion. And he'd, and he'd want it's to not hear our opinions. Either. It really is to me. But it's, do you think about it this way? It's not a problem. I'd be more fine if it was like a snake. 
Fuck. What the fuck? Why did it? <laughs> Why did it have to if be there's snakes? a snake in your room? <laughs> <laughs> that's probably gonna be a problem. There's a, <laughs> there's a snake passive. in my room. Oh god. Dude, I just read a Spider Gwen comic where Craven dumped a bunch of snakes into her house. That was scary. What? And then they That's ran outside and there was an orangutan. Wild. And also a puma. What? Are you sure it wasn't a jaguar? I could have been. I don't really know that much about big cats. I totally misquoted that RVB thing, but that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> I see. I should have known that's what you were trying to do anyway. You should have come naturally. Yeah. What, what, what does Sarge think it is? It's a puma or a... Chupa thingy. <laughs> a chupa thingy, yeah. Anyway, uh, <laughs> is, Sorry, is here? I, it's I've really got, confusing. I've got here. my eye on the spider and I, yeah. I'm waiting for it to move out of cover so I can Should smack I <laughs> Is this a war? Have you got yeah. like barricades set up? Was that the well? It's, it's in a on? position where, like, if I miss it, it's gonna fucking like either run away or attack me, and I I don't want to know it's which. Not gonna at- okay, it's not, not gonna, gonna attack, attack you. Here's the thing, Nathan. Here's the interesting thing. If you do nothing, it won't attack you. If you go after it, it it has the slight chance that it might attack you. Probably won't. It, but it's I mean more likely than if you I do nothing. I really would just prefer. Well, I can't. It can't escape my room. At do you point. have any bug spray? No. At all. No. You have a shoe. I have a shoe, but I'm waiting for it to nope, get out of the No, lost all my shoes. <laughs> I threw them out the window. They're on the spider's corner of the room. I can't get them. <laughs> oh, dear. Uh, um, Maybe we won't talk about Captain Marvel. Just no. go on and I, I'm, I'm listening. It's just... Is this, is this the Spider-Verse episode of the podcast? Uh. It is not. <laughs> uh, I'm going to talk about Kraken for a bit. Because he's okay. pretty interesting. <laughs> but I thought we were talking um, about Captain Marvel. I don't know. What do you want to talk about? Captain Marvel. Let's just do I that. know. Do we want... Okay. We're just going to go in with Captain Marvel while Nathan's freaking out. Okay. Okay. Uh, damn it. It moved back into cover. Been recording for <laughs> 20 minutes. <laughs> Uh. Oh god, no, I, I can't see it now. Oh god. Okay, Matt, do you want to start? <laughs> yeah, go for it. Okay. Um, so, Captain Marvel just came out, and I thought it was very good. It was... People are comparing it a lot to Wonder Woman, and I thought it was way better than Wonder Woman. It was a really solid origin story and just a really fun and entertaining movie, which Marvel has nailed for the last however long. Like, they've just made some really good quality films, and Captain Marvel is no no different. And I personally think it goes, you know, faster, further, higher, or whatever the, the catchphrase of the movie is. I think it does a really good job of explaining carol but also like building a really interesting world the 90s Woo! <laughs> it built the 90s no i just you know characterizing it and i don't know give it giving shield like positioning shield within the 90s i thought it did that really well but um yeah what did mm. what, what do you think about it ben yeah i did I, I enjoyed it. It was, uh, there's, it obviously has its issues. Uh, I mean, like all movies do. So yeah. Yeah. Um, there are some twists in it that, you know, it could be hit or miss. Obviously they're a bit hard to talk about before we get into spoilers. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I think going into it, uh, I was a little worried because either they'd, completely change uh carol's character and then it's really there's no point in adapting the character if it's just going to be completely different uh then i'd then i'd have i'd take some issue with it if they were like we're making a captain marvel movie except it's nothing to do with carol danvers because 
It's completely different. That wasn't the yeah, case. Yeah, the only similarity um, they share is the oh. name, but it, it wasn't like that at all. Oh, no. She was characterized in a really interesting way th- because... Uh, I, so I, th- I think uh, Vox said something along the lines of um, she's she's told how to act all the time and that's how she acts. Um, I don't th- think that's very accurate. I think the points that they make or the examples that they use in their review is uh, that, sure, that is there is someone saying this is something that is true about you and then we, we as the audience are able to see that that's true. But I think that's more them telling the audience this is something that's true about Carol and if you're paying enough attention you should no- have noticed that already it's just sort of like a you know the whole show don't tell sort of thing it's a they do yeah, tell it's even a- though you're not supposed to but that's just to be more blatant about this character that they're supposed to be introducing but they are also because if they showing. didn't do that if they didn't if they weren't blatant, everyone would complain about her being mischaracterized or something. So mm-hmm. I'm glad that they they did do that. She certainly and wasn't they also, mischaracterized in my eyes. No, they they did some really good characterization work, and they did some really good showing work as well. Like, this is not a spoiler. It's in the trait. Like, so the in the trailers they show like the flashback scenes to. Her, like, getting in jets and stuff with her friends. And, like, the use of flashback in this movie is used really effectively in that whole showing sense. It's kind of, like, a really efficient and well-thought-out way to flesh out who Carol is as a person, not as, like, who she is in the opening parts of the film. So, I thought that was really really done well. Uh, because I usually, I'd usually go, if they just tell you everything about the character through flashback, that's, that's not particularly interesting to me generally, but the way they used it in this, it was sort of like, it was, it was they non-linear. Didn't ex- they didn't overextend. Yeah, it was non-linear. They didn't overextend the flashback to go like, here's a very significant scene from her past that shaped who she was. It's, it's kind of like, um, the, it's kind of like and, and I know this is uh, this might seem like on the nose uh, in terms of like this being a feminist movie or something but it reminded me a lot of the um, final scene well, one of the final scenes in Buffy uh, in the last episode where uh, I not to spoil too much but uh, Willow does a spell if you uh, are familiar with Buffy then you know what that spell is and then it shows a montage of a bunch of different uh, young girls around the world uh, suddenly experiencing something. Uh, I don't want to, you know, I don't want to spoil what that is because we're not talking about Buffy right now. Uh, it yeah, that, me that's a lot for of that later because, episode. Yeah, <laughs> there's a lot of like, it's just, it shows you who Carol is because you, uh, even with the little that you're given of the, the situation of the flashbacks, it's super easy for you to see what's going on. And you could see, I, I don't think you need to view it as, um, look, here's this scene from the past where she's being bullied because she's a woman. That's not what's happening. It's the scene from Absolutely the past where, not. yeah, th- that, I think if, that, if you have that view, you're going to get the wrong impression of her character. It's not about sexism. It's about her being told to repress her emotions. But the most important thing, in my opinion, about Carol Danvers as a character is how she's how much she wears her particular emotions the ones that she feels strongest about like anger anger is definitely one of her big ones on her sleeve yeah like, and if also she's sort annoyed of... at someone she's willing to show it she's not held back by it exactly and it's it's her anger and her like hiding behind her humor which which characterizes mm. her as a character at least at the beginning of the film like like she she hides her lack of background with like really really well done and filmed back and forth between like you know Jude Law's character and Nick Fury and stuff so yeah and she, also she um, uses those particular emotions to hide that she doesn't remember anything yeah because she does have amnesia in this movie which you know what whatever yeah, which is tra- in the trailers it's not the, so the greatest but it does not a spoiler. work to the merits of I guess the plot overall. 
Um, Absolutely. Yeah. Especially but, yeah, and, in and the second another, and third act. Yeah. Yeah, well, which I think the third act ended up being incredibly strong, strangely enough. I think it might be Wonder my Woman, which just favorite like, went third on too long act. and fell apart. And yeah. it was like just the worst thing. It was just like, man, you guys have uh, done a pretty good job. And then you did that one, huh? Yeah. <laughs> and an airport, an airport one with, with Wait, lots of It doesn't of even explosions. look like an airport. Yeah, no, it's, it looks like fairly, and it doesn't even it, like it doesn't even, it contradicts itself as well. It doesn't even make sense to be there. Whereas, yeah, well, Captain Marvel, the third act is definitely um, the if you can't get into the movie at the beginning, it might be because of the amnesia. It might be because it's hard to identify with this character, it, especially as we're saying that it's the flashbacks that really uh, strengthen the character, and she has amnesia for a part of it. So she doesn't have those flashbacks because she doesn't remember who she is. So it's hard to sympathize with the character early on. But once you understand who she is, um, I think, I think, I think it's a good sign Not of yet. her character in the future because it's very easy to like her character once she knows who she is and we know who she is. So exactly. even if so, you didn't particularly enjoy Captain Not- Marvel, it's a good sign that she'll be enjoyed in future films. Exactly. So, yeah, not only does it strengthen her as a character, but it also it strengthens the first act. So if you thought the amnesia was weak, well, once she has developed her character, it just makes the rest of the movie exponentially better, in my opinion. Like, So, wait, know. how does that make any sense that if you didn't like it, you'll like it once she gets her memories back? I'm saying that um, you may like the character Captain Marvel oh, once I she see. like in future films because believe it or not she will be in the uh, the next Marvel release Avengers four, so I'm saying that you may not have enjoyed the movie, which is fine. You know you can have whatever opinion you want on the movie, um, but I think it's a good sign that the strongest part of it was her fully coming into her own as a character. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, and yeah, I, I yeah I was gonna say something else. Ignore that. It's probably more of a spoiler. Yeah. So, and I really hope they don't do the Civil War 2 storyline if they do nah, it they in like phase four. Do that. Because gosh darn, that is very bad. And they've already uh, this Carol up the Danvers so. is, is not that. This Carol Danvers is not the Carol Danvers Nobody's from that. Civil War 2. Nobody was who it was, they were in Civil War 2. It's like Avengers. Man, Avengers remember Man. when Miles was in Civil War 2 and he killed Captain America? Yeah. Then, I don't But then he didn't? But, but then it was okay because Captain America was evil at the time. <laughs> he was actually... Yeah, is that the one... He was actually Hydra. Is that the one where he's Nazi? He's not a Nazi. He was Hydra. Hydra isn't inherently... Uh, whatever. Fuck it. I don't care. Fascist. I, explain that. I don't, I don't know. need to explain anything to you. Let, let's let's not get into it. <laughs> okay, keep your secrets then. Um, um, so I'll keep making that joke. <laughs> so on, the the scores were for IMDb. It was a five point four, but uh, I fuck would that shit. I, Inaccurate. I would assume that that's just because of uh, trolling. Before the movie, even yeah, yeah, not even I trolling, know. just general, just, bombing. just yeah. bombing for no reason. Um, I, I think like you could either this is a kind of movie that you could either really enjoy and put it as one of your top ones, or you could think it's possible. I don't know if you can go and watch that movie and come away thinking it was bad. Absolutely, it's a solid Marvel film or an excellent Marvel film. You should watch it at some point, Nathan. It's it's worth the watch. Okay. What did you... Well, uh, I didn't actually hear what you said, Nathan. You cut out. Well, I, I was just going to say that regardless of um, how good how good you thought the f- movie was, uh, I don't think it's fair to say that nobody would dislike it. I would say that there's probably someone who's just like, I don't really connect with oh, any of this. That, but, that's true. But what I meant was it's, it's pretty hard for you to dislike it because it is well-made. It, it is engaging in... in uh, at least some ways. Uh, if you don't enjoy the the beginning of it, obviously, then it's possible for you to just sort of get bogged down and not really pay attention throughout it, and so you don't enjoy the experience. But it's mm-hmm. certainly not a bad movie. Uh, it's not for everyone. 
but there are definitely some people who will enjoy it much more than I did, and I already enjoyed it a fair bit. So it's it's difficult to argue that it's below 50%, uh, which you could yeah. do with a significant number of releases with this um, profile. So Yeah, well, I mean, I think Rotten overall Tomatoes success. gave it um, 84% anyway. Um, yeah, that's pretty good. That That's on the same level as Infinity what? War. What's um Metacritic though? It was uh sixty six, I think. Um, give me a sec. It may have changed though, because obviously the reviews will still be coming out. Yeah. Um, it is no, it's still sixty six. Yeah. See, that's pretty good. Okay. That's a good score for a movie on Metacritic. Uh, it's it's not like it's not stellar, but it's it's definitely it's not a movie Logan. It's not recommended. It's still... well, I think. Did Logan Logan? get good reviews? I thought Logan got good reviews on Metacritic as well as Rotten Tomatoes. I think think there are certain movies that have um, surprisingly lower scores than they should. Uh, Logan got a 77. Ah, okay. Yeah. Yeah. That is good. (laughs) That is pretty good. Um, But anyway, what we should I was just going to quickly say on the on the note of people like. If they don't like the stero- story, they generally... Or, like, like, people just hating it generally. I mean, those types of... Like, like p- most likely those types of people like auteur cinema. Like, like probably. But this film yeah. is beautiful. Like, this is a... In my... Like, it, it's a totally different kind of shot Marvel film. And I... There's a, there's a distinctive visual difference in it and it makes it feel so unique and the shot compositions in it are just um, so good. So if you if you appreciate good cinematography in a film, go watch this movie as well. Like, uh, it's really well done here. I'd for the most part agree with that. Aside from the um, the scene at the beginning with uh, the, the sort of Cree deployment uh on that planet i think that was a little too dark um it was too it was a bit too dusty yeah occasionally it was a bit incoherent to see because of the um it it either being dark or dusty in some settings but there are definitely some very impressive i think that again in the third act really once a particular thing happens that i don't want to say uh because it will be a spoiler uh we'll we'll get into it into a second improved just out of sheer in- enjoyment like it's just fun Absolutely. to watch um it's a certain thing that i think marvel has done has come close to doing one other time uh in it in fact a scene that i would compare heavily to the scene where this happens uh yeah there's actually a lot of similarities but yeah it's something that uh, the first time i watched uh guardians 2 they did something uh, and I thought it's really impressive that Marvel tried to do something like that because all of the other movies, this is like another level of something. Uh, yeah, I think once we get to spoilers, I can go more in depth though. I think um, we might start moving into spoilers. Well, I, I was just going to say before that, um, so the main plot summary on uh, when you just look up Captain Marvel is uh, what's her face? I don't have it up currently. Uh, give me a second. Brie Larson? No, uh, Carol Danvers. Captain Marvel. I wasn't sure whether it said her real name. Uh, gets Both caught of up in those it. were correct. Okay, dokey. <laughs> well, yeah, no, it's just I didn't know what the specific was. Um, gets caught up in the middle of a galactic war between two alien races. Is that like the whole movie or is it like sort of the it's, second half kind of thing? Or? That That is it's bare really bones. It's not focused on the Kree scroll that is, as much as okay. it seems to imply. Indicate? That's yeah. definitely what the trailers indicated. And I'm going to get into the trailers in the spoiler section because I, I want to talk about how brilliant the trailer is now that I've seen the movie. Which is interesting because so. the trailers didn't seem all too... Impre- it's it's an interesting comment on Hollywood these days that the trailers didn't seem all too impressive beforehand. And then after yeah. seeing the movie, you can appreciate what they are. Yeah. So, do we want to get into spoilers now? Uh, um, Matthew, sure. okay is that? there anything else you guys want yeah. to say? I mean, I don't really have anything to say since I did There was see something, it. but I realized it's probably better after spoilers. Yeah. Okay. So, so from now, we'll be talking spoilers for Captain Marvel. I highly recommend you go see the movie before listening to this bit of the podcast because it's best 
going th- in there fresh, just not knowing too much about it. So please, please twists. do that before listening to this. There are twists. We won't it's n- yeah, say it's anything more than that. It's not a standard sort of origin where everything is exactly as expected, which is interesting. Where everyone's Red Skull. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so spoilers starting now. Do you want to do um, a summary first, just because... Uh, just a summary of the whole movie? Of it. Because then, then, even though you know we have one for spoilers, there might be somebody listening who just doesn't care. So I feel like we should just sort of summarise a little. Okay. Uh, Plus, so, I also need to probably know if I was to discuss. That is also a, a thought yeah, that I had. Abs- do you want that's me to a just go good through idea. It? Yeah, yeah go you, you go for it, Ben. Okay. So, uh, Carol Danvers is a, she, she, wait, well, she's not referred to as Carol Danvers initially. She's, uh, re- referred to Viz. as Viz, uh, Viz, because she wakes up on the Cree planet Hala and she believes that she is Cree because she remembers herself having blue blood and also Jude Law's character who is unnamed for a significant portion of the movie, uh, told her that that is the case and she has amnesia. So she has no reason to think otherwise. Uh, turns out she's part of sort of an elite squad of Kree, uh, and the Kree are fighting an alien species called the uh, Skrull, uh, something that you would recognize if you've seen the trailers, or if you know anything about Marvel comics generally, because they are very important. They are shape-shifting aliens. Uh, they have, they are usually green and they have pointy ears, very identifiable when they're not shape shape-shifted into a different species, but they can do that, and they are very convincing. Uh, generally, <laughs> uh, and they were done very well in this movie. Yeah, I, I thought quite liked them. Skrulls were their design was very aesthetically pleasing because the Skrulls in the comics are kind of weird. They're yeah, I mean they're an, they're a fairly well old here. design back before they are uh, when they were really trying hard to pump stuff out before they could get too much into d- d- design or like detailed design. But yeah, so um, she's part of this elite Kree squad who, uh, their their first mission, well, not their first mission, but their first mission in the movie. They're called is, Star Force, right? Yes, Star Force. They, uh, they are to track down an informant, a Kree informant who uh, was on a planet, uh, whatever, wherever it was. And they go there, they go, uh, they, they track his location. There's a bunch of locals outside, uh, which they eventually find out... Uh, Skrull in disguise. Carol runs in to find the informant. Uh, she finds him. It turns out it is Talos. Ben uh, Talos. Mendelsohn the whole ben time. Ben Mendelsohn. Talos. Uh, the best character. <laughs> the leader of <laughs> this group of Skrulls. He's so freaking uh, In good. disguise as this informant. Uh, so she gets oh, yeah. kidnapped. Also, every, every Skrull is Australian. <laughs> Canon, every Skrull is Australian now because Ben Mendelsohn's Australian. Uh but like all the other scrolls, kind of sounded Australian as well. So yeah, it's it's interesting because they sort of when they're in disguise, they disguise their voices as well. But that's just a thing that they can do. But then na- his natural voice is um his Australian accent, which is awesome because there's a bit where he plays himself like it, outside of makeup, and he has to put on an accent. And then he, there's like a little section where he sort of slips out back into his normal accent. Uh, there's a, there's actually a lot of really funny meta stuff going on with Ben Mendelsohn. Uh, he's re- he's really great in it. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So beautiful blue kidna- eyes. <laughs> she gets kidnapped. Uh, the the scroll probe her memories, uh, and she starts to see things on Earth, a planet she doesn't recognize, people she doesn't recognize, because she doesn't from think her she's past. Human. Probably. She thinks she's Cree. Yeah. Uh, then she breaks out because she's competent. She's f- so uh, awesome. She she's breaks. Like, she, she beats up a whole brunt- bunch of scroll in like cuffs or like constrained by these things it's the so other cool who the could cor- do such a thing is of course abigail brand in uh the secret invasion comics <laughs> although she does even right. more yeah wow she's impressive um <laughs> so she breaks out uh the there's a hole in the side of the ship the uh the scr- scrolls uh when probing her memories realized that something they were searching for is on earth uh, because she has memories Plot. of something that they're searching for. Um, and so if she's from Earth, which her memories seem to indicate, then obviously that's where they're going to have to go. Uh, she falls out of the ship and lands in the roof of a blockbuster. Uh, 
she attempts to communicate with her crew they say just stay there we'll come and get you um the the Kree are now on sorry the scrolls are now on, on earth so it is compromised be careful uh do, you don't do anything we'll come get you uh then nick fury shows up and he's like aliens huh i don't believe it and then he sees aliens so he does believe it <laughs> and he's just like uh, man i believe it yeah well i mean he does an autopsy on a, a dead scroll so after a chase and then scene. ben mendelson is there as well and then yeah ben mendelson walks out looking like a human and he's nick fury's boss and he's like he walks up to the the scroll and goes hey audience i'm the i'm talos this the scroll leader uh, just in case you didn't know who Ben Mendelsohn was, um, <laughs> which I like. Look the, how the beautiful I am. <laughs> I like the implication Wait. that Fury's boss existed, and he already looked and sounded like Ben Mendelsohn. And then, <laughs> and then <laughs> there's also Talos. Is is Ben Mendel whatever? Is he from uh, Cap Two or? He's no. he hasn't been in it before. Yeah, this oh, okay. is the first so, appearance that he has. So who knows what happened? To he's been in movie. other movies. He's been in but Ready Player One. He was then, in Bloodlines. Then you're saying yeah. that did he actually directly BMX address Bandits. the audience? BMX, yeah. Uh, he, I, it's not like a Deadpool sort of. He looks at the audience and then says yes. It's just I'm saying that he walks up to the the scroll that's having an autopsy, and oh, okay. uh, he says like. Yeah, I recognize the, your sacrifice or something like that. No, so that's yeah. just to tell the audience it, that he oh, is him. Oh. Okay. It's actually great foreshadowing for what actually happens later on in the movie. Like he's actually mourning his, yeah, like compatriot, and like in a very respectful way. I don't know. Which is, yeah, it's a very humanizing moment for him as a character. It's a sign that something unusual is happening in terms of translating it from the comics because the scroll are generally presented to be as like warlike people who uh have very little regret uh and very little morality so the fact that he's uh respecting this singular person the singular the other scroll is is a comment on him being a more sympathetic character than you might expect uh yeah yeah so after that uh carol remembers uh thinks of something that she had remembered upon the scroll probing her memories a bar she goes there fury also goes there i don't particularly remember if there was a reason why that may be a plot hole or maybe i'm just not remembering uh i think he was tracking I think her or something he was following her yeah but i don't um, know how he was in the bar before her in theory when she walks into the bar i it is it is near a shield base as well so I get, yeah, I guess that's. I'm, uh, yeah. Well, no, it's not a shield base. It's a Pegasus base. I have Pegasus base. Is that not because related to Shield, at all? I don't think so. Project Pegasus. She finds a um, a photo in the bar of a jet that says Project Pegasus on it, and she remembers herself climbing into a jet because she used to be a fighter pilot. Uh, she doesn't particularly remember that she was, but she remembers doing it, so I guess she must have been. Uh. And so Fury says, well, I know that aliens exist now, so I'm teaming up with you because aliens seem like a pretty big threat. I can't trust anyone anymore because he's, I saw shape-shifting aliens who turned into Coulson and tried to kill me. He's so, fairly trusting as opposed to... Um, yeah, oh yeah, Coulson was in it as well. Uh, and a scroll became and he's him just and like, then he was like, uh, uh, guys, <laughs> you left me at Blockbuster. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And then, so they go to the Project Pegasus base, which is nearby. Uh, they look for a file on Dr. What was it? Wendy Lawson? Yeah, Wendy uh, Lawson. Uh, who it seemed as though the scrolls were tracking based on her memories. Uh, and they were they looking for out. something called a light, uh, light speed engine. That, that, that's the yes. sort of MacGuffin for the movie, is this yeah, light she, speed engine that can end the war. Yeah, she made a light speed engine uh, for a plane and uh, Fury finds her file and it says that the plane, uh, the, the jet that had the light speed engine crashed and um, that the pilot and Dr. Lawson died in the crash uh, and that the last person to uh, see either of them was, doc- uh, not Dr., sorry, Maria Rambo, uh, not Monica Rambo, apparently. That's her daughter, is Monica. Uh, a yeah, from and the she has the 
the um, necklace that says Monica on it yep. around her neck. That was pretty cool. For her daughter. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so then uh, Fury pages his boss to say, you know, come get us here. This is where we are. And then he shows up and, it, oh, yeah, he because was a scroll the whole time. I don't think know. he still trusts Carol yet. Yeah, he like, didn't. She's still time. an alien. She still so, needs to be detained so that the, you know, S.H.I.E.L.D. Oh, can figure and, out what's going on. Um, and Goose is there. Oh, yeah, and Goose, uh, the cat who in the comics was called Chewy, but I think they decided there's too many Star Wars references in Marvel, so let's name him after a Top I mean, this this instead. movie had pretty... This this movie had a lot of Mo- Star Wars references. There was it. a Star Wars reference with involving Goose later on. Um, yeah. So, <laughs> so that was pretty incredible. But anyway, moving on. So they escape. Coulson uh, basically covers for Fury and Carol to get out of there. Because, mm-hmm. I don't know, Coulson's pretty they, cool. They find some sort of high, a high-tech uh, space-fit vessel, a space-suited vessel. It's not That may or may actually. not be, be a Quinjet. Well. Yeah, <laughs> looks a little like a Quinjet, a little like a Pelican from Halo. Um, yeah, that was so fucking cool. And, they fly and so they to, escape. To Monica, well, sorry, Maria and Monica's house in Louisiana. Uh, and th- they meet there. She's like, oh, we know each other. We're like best friends uh, to uh, Viz. Uh, your name is Carol Danvers. And she says, I don't remember this. Wait, no, I'm sort of remembering it. I don't really remember it. Um, and then Monica brings out a bunch of pictures like of her past life. I thought this scene was really well done. This is where a lot of the uh, memories kick in, right? Yeah, this is where she really remembers what happened, how she crashed, like, pretty much setting up the third act of the movie. Yeah, the um, the uh, more memories come in when Talos shows up in the house. He's like, yeah, I know where you were going, but he's not in disguise and he's doing his Australian <laughs> accent. Going. Um, yeah, going. Um, <laughs> he, he says, please don't shoot me. Uh, I'm not trying to threaten you. And and get that fucking cat away from me. Well, no, oh, yeah. it's not he a cat. He says the cat it's is a, a flocken. Uh, flocken. Which is another comics reference. Uh, and uh, because Rocket identified Chewie as a flocken. So, yeah, it turns out that uh, Talos is just trying to get his people to safety. Uh uh, he needs the light speed engine to uh, yeah because the the Kree destroyed the Skrull home planet he needs the light speed engine to find a home world uh, far enough away that the Kree can't track them because you know the Kree are like planet destroyers which if you've seen Guardians of the Galaxy that probably comes as no surprise to you because the whole like villain plot of that movie was that Ronan wanted to destroy Xandar the planet i feel like so, the the accusers of the planet destroyers the accusers do tend to destroy planets it seems um, yeah they don't they don't have a they don't have a terraforming weapon like in man of steel or anything like that well they just the sort power of stone kind of works blow as it a up. terraformer yeah but, that's but only like Guardians, the way the way they were going to destroy earth was with like ballistic missiles so i don't think they were going to destroy yeah. earth they were just sort of like bombard that spot yeah, I don't know. So where was that? But anyway, oh yeah, and then they uh, Thomas yeah. says, "I have the black and box then from the, the, Ben the Mendelsohn continues to be the best character. Yeah, <laughs> he's very charismatic, uh, very enjoyable to watch on screen. He's awesome. They they listen to the black box. Carol gets more memories. Uh, she remembers that she was good friends with Lawson. Uh, she was like a superior uh, in Project Pegasus, which was the sort of where they worked as as pilots, um, Maria and Carol. And it was Carol. revealed that, like, women weren't allowed to fly jets in the U.S. Army at that I think time. It was 89. I don't know how that actually historically works, but I assume it's true. Like, and that Project Pegasus is the only way they're able yeah. to actually get any time in the sky. So that, that sets up that whole incident with the, the light speed engine. And the fact of the matter is that a Krull ship was... Krull? Which one? Like, Krull? Kree or Skrull? Wait. Uh, Kree. Sorry. (laughs) 
not Kroll. Um, uh, no, Cree, a Cree ship was um, chasing them down and trying to trying to shoot down the light speed uh, engine craft. And when it's revealed that Jar Jarrell, is that his name? That is a character from Superman. You mean no, Yon Rog? Not Jor El. Yon Rog, that's the one. But Jor El actually shot down nope. the light speed craft. Yon Rog. Did I say Yon Rog? <laughs> and I. <laughs> anyway. In fact, they don't even say Yon-, Yon Rog yet. They still haven't said that he's Yon Rog. They've cleverly concealed that it's Yon Rog, even though we all knew before the movie came out that it was Yon Rog. Uh, because <laughs> it would be obvious that Yon Rog is bad, bad guy because everyone knows that. Uh, but what they do say is that Lawson is called Marvel. Interesting decision. More on that later. Yeah, and, and so Yon Rog killed Marvel, and that led to Carol facing off against Yon Rog, and then shooting the light speed engine, which is the source of her power. She absorbed the energy from the light speed engine. And Did I forget to mention that she can shoot like lasers from her fists because that's a sort oh, of unique thing. Oh, she can also she can shoot <laughs> photon blasts from her fists. That's that's yes. pretty cool. So, but uh, ho- it, it ho- said ho- that bef- uh, it's so before we her continue, ability to do this is okay. Yeah. Before, uh, so, firstly, is she human or Cree? She's human. So okay. yes, she's human, but she thinks she's Cree because that's what she was told, and they said that they gave her her powers and her ability to do to use them are controlled by the Cree. She now knows that none of that is true. She's a human, and her powers come from absorbing uh, stuff from the light speed engine. And okay, so but and that was done before Kree. she got amnesia. Yeah, that yes. was done before. She yeah, got, okay, she had yeah. amnesia. Um, I assume, I don't know if it was her amnesia was manufactured by the Kree so that they could, um, uh, you know. I mean, they definitely her manipulated her memory. Yeah, yeah, they did. It's it's also possible that she just got it because she hit her head when she fell down. Because mm-hmm. they showed a scroll shooting um, Marvel instead of Young Rog. So yeah. Oh, that's true. It was probably a bit of amnesia and a bit of mind manipulation. Yeah, and she also thought like, she had blue it blood was a in that crap, huge explosion, which is not true. Okay. She didn't have blue blood. Like, Marvel had blue blood. No, and it was his blood. Oh, one, it was um, Yon Rog's blood in her. They were transfusing her with yeah Yon Rog's blood. So she both has anyway. Kree blood and also like super atomic atomic powers from uh, the light speed engine. Yeah. So then yeah. they go. Okay, we know how to track this. The, the light speed core, which is where the light speed and now they're looking for the laboratory of um, for doc- of Marvel, Dr. Marvel, which is in Marvel. Orbit. So they uh, reconfigure <laughs> their ship to uh-huh. go out. It, yes, there is a joke, and it's f- quite funny because Ben Mendelsohn is great, and he's everything that he delivers in this movie is almost perfect. It's just like it's it's a, worth watching the movie just for Ben Mendelsohn, like whether you enjoy it generally, you know, I, I think. I think I'm pretty confident to say that it's impossible for you to watch it and go, I didn't like Ben Mendelsohn in this movie. Um, <laughs> I don't care what you say, Nathan. It is impossible. He was very good. Um, um, I'd kind of say that for the um, Nick Fury, um, Carol Danvers relationship, like like their chemistry was very good as they well. They were very good in it, yes. But that, 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 than, um, that's not... Uh, Aquaman uh, and Mira. Wonder Woman and um, Chris Pine. No, they, they, I think I they were quite good. I remember his name. The two of them. Uh, tre- uh, More Chris Steve Pine. Trevor, Trevor Phillips? Chris, Chris Pine. No. Uh, and I, I don't particularly like Gal Gadot's performance in, that, in Wonder Woman generally, but I, I think that the best part of her performance was her chemistry with Chris Pine. Um, yeah. I don't because, know if it's just yeah. because he's particularly charismatic, but um, yeah, I think that, that was a, a merit of that movie, whereas in Aquaman, yeah. I, I don't think either of you have seen it. I haven't seen it. No. Okay, I, I just really didn't think that Jason Momoa and Amber Heard had great chemistry. I think there was a lot of that movie was riding on them being entertaining together, but it, they weren't particularly, which I think brought the movie down for me a little. Uh, there are other things that are enjoyable about, enjoyable about it, though. Yeah. Uh, so anyway, back to a, like there's there's a solidly good like 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 can't can't hate on Ben Mendelsohn, and I reckon while like not on Ben Mendelsohn level, the Fury. 
uh, Carol relationship is pretty top notch as well. Mm. Anyway, continue. Uh, yeah, so they go into this the Marvel's laboratory uh, in 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 space, and then it turns out that a bunch of Skrull have been hiding out there, including Talos's uh, wife and daughter, and that's the reason why he wanted to go up there is because uh, Marvel not was for the light speed engine. Well, sort of for the light speed core, but m- yeah, mainly but because that was, it was there. also for good reasons as well. Like it's to save his people. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Marvel uh, had been harboring them there. She said, "Don't send a message out because the Kree could track you." Uh, and so they're like, "Oh, this is all good." But then it turns out that the Kree did track them because they just went up there right when the Kree were tracking them. So Yon Rog and the others show up, and they're like, "Oi, ahoy, matey!" Oh wait, f- one important thing is they did find the Lightspeed Core, and it's the Tesseract. Uh, yeah. Oh. That's fairly important. They put it in a lunchbox with the funds on it. Um, so that's pretty fantastic. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> and uh, so... Oh, yeah, Monica goes up into space with them. I should... So not Monica, Maria. I will keep calling her yeah. Mo- Monica because that's the one who is the character from the comics. I just keep forgetting. She goes up into space as well because they're like, you should be there or whatever. I don't know. Strange decision it, it, morally, but you know, she's a good character that I did enjoy on screen. So I'm not complaining about her being there more. Um, they also take the cat. <laughs> yeah. yeah cat. They're in space and uh, they're fighting the, the Kree. Yeah. Carol also, gets one more thing again. Oh yes. So this is a very long uh, summary. <laughs> yeah. The we guy. Get, so one of, one of the star force, people he was in guardians wasn't yeah he? um Cor- korath is d- d- how the fuck do you say his name g gmon digimon digimon i think digimon um, he's digimon. also in uh gotcha uh shazam he's playing shazam yeah that's what you said yeah okay wait well, he's not please he's, he's not shazam yeah he's should no i mean <laughs> he's shazam the wizard korath not shazam oh right not yeah. Right, right. So he's in both Captain Marvel movies, which is funny. <laughs> um, he's so good. Yeah, so he's there um, with the Kree. Yeah. Uh, they attack the people there, capture them. Uh, Carol gets knocked out because there's some foreshadowing where she's like, oh, not up to the fight against Yon Rog for some reason. He's this fucking Yon Rog, I don't know. <laughs> um, and then she gets uh, attached to the Supreme Intelligence, which I forgot to mention from the beginning as well. Um, it's kind of a it's hard way to summarize because there are a few complicated details, but the Supreme Intelligence is like the leader of the, the Kree. It's, it's an AI leader of the Kree. Um, and it takes the, the form of Marvel for um, Carol because it attempts to, I guess, emotionally manipulate you so that it makes itself look like the person you admire most. Uh, and so the, for Carol, that is Marvel. Which it makes sense in the grand scheme of the her. movie. Uh, and she goes, then she has some more flashbacks and she goes, wait a minute, you don't control my powers. I got this from a completely separate thing from you. Uh, fuck you. And then she, it's so freaking good. Her powers, uh, just a girl starts playing and she beats up all the Kree and it turns out she's like significantly more impressive than them. Uh, Fury and... And then Yong uh, Rog's just like, uh, I don't know. I'm fine. Please stop. <laughs> Fury and Maria uh, walk off with uh, the Tesseract inside Goose, Goose because he swallows it because he's a flurkin, uh, as I said. Uh, they He also eats some uh, scroll in this Star Wars reference to like episode 7 with the... What's the name of the thing in episode 7 when they're... No, uh... I don't know what the monster's called, but it's it's when they're on the Falcon and they yeah. <laughs> release and the tentacle monster. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it just eats some of the, the, the raiders that, that try and hijack the Millennium Falcon. It's I assume that's a pretty monster. great. It and looked a lot like it. It is. a. am pretty sure it's an exact recreation of that scene where yeah. the people get eaten and up. And Chewie is in that scene, so it makes sense that... Goose, yeah, who is absolutely. Chewy. Yeah, um, so that happens. They then come across the uh, S- scrolls who have been taken prisoner by some uh, Kree, uh, and it, 
Fury tries to set uh, Goose on them. He doesn't do it. Uh, and then he mentions something to one of the Kree, who, uh, which is kind of like a tick to... Which is a callback to, call to earlier in the film. Scene so that he's able to identify that that Kree is actually Talos in disguise, pretending to be a guard. Uh, so they manage to get away because Talos is able to take the other guards by surprise because he's in disguise. Because... You know, the Skrulls can do that. It was a thing that was kind of, like, disregarded after a while when the Skrulls turn out to be good guys. But then, yeah, the fact that they use it for a beneficial reason is fairly unique to using Skrulls in a story, so I kind of like that. Uh, Carol falls out of the spaceship at some point. I don't remember when. Uh, they, they, The rest of them get away on in the their ship that they used to get there. Carol fights and a bunch Carol of them. And then Carol starts... They fight oh, some when of she them falls in into like a Earth. Fight. Yeah, she I falls into Earth, but she Jor- fucking Jor-El. can fly now, which she couldn't do before. I meant your, yeah. your whatever. <laughs> Fuck. Uh, hold she holds on to his. They, she hangs on to one of the ships who falls through orbit, and then she has to let go because the ship just like I don't know, it's too hot. So she has to like they are re-entering Earth's atmosphere. And so, like, she's just falling. That is what happens, yes. And then okay. she, like, awakens her powers and she can fly now and it's she freaking goes amazing. Super Saiyan mode. Uh, which it's is really. This is all this is what my day about. Uh, well, actually, I'll come back to it. So, yeah, she fights a bunch of them. Uh, the uh, Ronan shows up and he's like, let's bomb this place. And then she flies <laughs> up and destroys all of the bombs and then destroys one of the ships and then Ronan's like let's leave and he leaves and that's pretty much the extent that he's in the movie um she goes back down to earth so and good. uh finds yon rog and he's like let's fight and she's like fuck that and she just blasts him with a photon blast and um they don't really like, have I don't a need to prove fight myself because he's nowhere you. near as impressive as her like he doesn't have the powers which is why I think it's a really interesting vi- villain in that he's not really up to the standards of Captain Marvel. Uh, so that, that's pretty And awesome. then she drags him along the ground. Like, it's this, this bit where she's, like, gesturing to pick him up. <laughs> and then he's just like, oh! and then she just grabs his hand and drags him across the desert. It's great. Yeah. She, she puts him back in his ship and says, uh, I've given, give a warning to the Supreme Intelligence I'm coming to end this war between the Skrull and the Kree because the Kree, uh, the Skrull obviously are being attacked, viciously attacked by the, the Kree. Uh, she then goes... Uh, I think that's that's basically uh, the end, right? That everyone meets back yeah, up again. Yeah, that's the she's end. Like, uh, I'm gonna... It cuts now... back to LA to the S.H.I.E.L.D. base with... Um... Oh, no, wait. Something Just back at the Louisiana that. house. She's like... Um, oh, that's I'll, right. I'll help the scroll find a home planet. So that's what she's been off doing is she's like ferrying the uh, scrolls around using the light core engine to somewhere far away so that And that basically sums up the time between the end of the movie and Infinity War. Yep. Yeah, that's what Yeah. And Goose so has been with Fury that's... the entire time. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that could you just sort of that lying on his desk. Yeah. That wasn't quite a um Elliot Kalen flop out. Uh, oh yeah, he does. Yeah, it's not really that important. <laughs> it just happens. And like the the bit in Winter Soldier where he's like, if so you trust lose people, you lose an eye or Last something like I that. It's just someone, like someone I lost uh, my eye. It's like I yeah no not okay. really. I mean, you trusted so the cat. <laughs> it's, I guess it's, it's exactly well. He did tr- he did trust <laughs> he did trust the cat to attack the the crawl scroll. No, it's it's. I felt like no, the that was a, a one thing I didn't particularly like about the movie was it's kind of like the no shit Sherlock joke uh, that everyone. I was literally about was to like, say that. I was like, it would be hilarious if it was just one, a cat. That one's a bit too obvious, but they did eye. it, so I don't know. It's not. Did you? Were you listening? It's, it's not an a cat, alien. It's a so I, okay. <laughs> it eat people. I like what kind? It's of a flurkin, dude. Is? It's a flurkin. Yeah, that, that means, that means nothing. Alien. to It has tentacles. What? Yeah, I mean, it's the most dangerous being in the universe. Okay, but it's Literally friendly. Literally could beat Thanos. Ish. Actually, could though. Probably could just eat Thanos, that thick boy. <laughs> yeah, it, it probably could. I mean, the way that Thanos was in Infinity War, he definitely seemed defeatable, and I feel like Goose could one on one him without the Infinity Gauntlet, or maybe with minimal stones. Yeah, like maybe so, four stones. That that. What fair. I don't understand mm. is so Fury's had the had the uh whatever for like 20 years 
Tesseract. Yeah, but I... Uh, yeah, I mean, they, they got it, it from in, at the beginning of the Avengers. Um, Captain America, didn't they? Because Stark found it at the end. See, I think that happened, but then he, yeah, that Project Pegasus had it. So I guess Stark, which didn't is give like it to Shield? kind of a subsection. Uh, kind of, yeah. I don't know. Oh, unless, yeah, unless Matt I feel was like right, which I I'm, I don't remember them Let mentioning me it but it's entirely possible no. i mean fury was able to access project pegasus uh it could be that stark senior thought that like like maybe he trusted marvel and so gave her the tesseract mm. and then she stored it away i mean she seemed like a pretty trustworthy character so i don't know maybe they'll explain it at some point but that does that does like there's about a gap of 70 years between like Avengers like uh, Captain America and Avengers where the Tesseract's just like like nothing has seen like it doesn't show up at any point in that but it's on Asgard mm. as I don't, well. Yeah, I don't remember Wait, how what? it works in What do you mean it like being in Thor? Being do you mean Thor 3? Yeah. But still that sets it up for the Avengers. What is it in Thor 1? No, in um, Thor the first one. No, I'm pretty sure that's only in three. They it's in the it. hall know. of well. items. Yeah. No, I think it's in one the inf- because there's a whole bit in two where they talk about how... Yeah, because they take can't it have back the in Aether Avengers because they 1. Can't harbor two. Actually, that's after Avengers 1. Yeah. But they return it... Yeah, after Avengers 1, they return it back to... So, because that means so they had at, it. at the event, end of the Avengers collector? 1... I don't maybe? remember. It's been a long time since I've seen the first Thor, but I'm pretty sure it was in that. And... That's how it's on Thor's planet. I don't remember it being Asgard. One. Yep. Yeah. I thought it might. Anyway, er, yeah, like, it, it, it it's it it's doesn't in, matter. It, it doesn't matter. It's set up for the Avengers, so that that just, I don't know. It, at like, least it appears before it's in the Avengers. Like, there's not, not this massive continuity. time gap. Okay. So. So any other questions, Nathan? Anyway. So it turns out the crew yeah, is bad. Nathan, do you have any other questions? But then. Yes. Okay. Not necessarily. Well, yeah, not all of them. Like, Marvel was good. It's not like a... Um, it, and I think the main okay, lesson is, then, don't judge a person by race, Nathan. And then, so... Exactly. You didn't really explain... Just because they're blind, she piece Captain of Marvel. shit. Did, did she just, Did you even watch Black so Panther? So does she just take the name... Yeah, but... What do you mean, how she... Be, oh, okay. She always was Captain gotcha. Marvel. She gets powers. Oh, she doesn't... She never calls herself Captain no. Marvel. Yeah, she just goes like, now I'm. And Carol no one, no one calls her Captain Marvel. Yeah. Okay. There's a bit where um, Fury says Marvel instead of Marvel, but that's the closest you get. When's the grandma punching? Scene? Uh, that's when. That's just after Fury first sees her. Uh, it's in between the autopsy bit that I oh. talked about. That's the chase sequence that I like briefly mentioned. And. Okay. It's really interesting how they did it. Like, e- even though the grandma's doing flips and stuff, they're still holding Captain Marvel back. <laughs> like, yeah, well, I mean, you you would. You wouldn't go, oh, that's you clearly would, not a you grandma. Would. I mean, it <laughs> looks like her a whole lot. Yeah. Don't want... I, I try and stop a fight, generally. I mean, I'd hold the grandma back as well if she was doing that sort of shit, but, like... <laughs> <laughs> she, anyway. She's like, okay, grandma, you've had enough. <laughs> Calm uh, down. Yeah. Uh, does it explain how Fury was like put in Shield and stuff? Like how he was. He's already in Shield at yeah, the beginning of shield. the movie. Yeah, yeah. But how he got up higher in it. Well, actually, he's, he's they do explain started. that a little bit. He's a soldier, I, then a oh. spy, then part of Shield. That's true. Yeah, he does. Say that, that's oh, okay. how that. It it is classic Nick in. Fury. That is exactly how it works in the comics. Is he was a soldier, Howling Commandos. And then he was a spy in the Cold War, but a spy for S.H.I.E.L.D. generally. And then he became, after he was sergeant, uh, I guess, did he go lieutenant, sergeant, then... Colonel. Colonel? Yeah. I think. Yeah, I, I'm just trying to remember the order. It could have just been sergeant, then colonel. I don't remember. But yeah, there's some consistency that I didn't actually think about. <laughs> There's a great bit, like, the, he goes on this whole rant about every, how everyone calls him Fury. And then, like, he, him and Ben Mendelsohn get an elevator together. And he's just like, great job, Nicholas. And 
<laughs> he gives him the, the 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 just dirtiest look to Ben Mendelsohn. He's just like, no, nah, this this fucko is a is a He's scroll. scroll right here. Yeah, I, I think that they um they didn't go like ham on the body snatcher ideal uh, idea. Not ideal. It's really not an ideal. Um, they didn't go ham no. or anything. They didn't. Overuse I'm kind of glad they didn't. Yeah. Because like, Cause if they'd the set something about. up like one of the Avengers was a scroll, that would retcon a whole bunch of stuff. Yeah, in like some of the other movies, and I'm not like that. Confident. Just wouldn't be fun. I'm not confident in the idea of a secret invasion movie because Winter Soldier was already sort of that. In obviously not on as grand a scale, but the idea that Hydra had infiltrated Shield is probably enough of that sort of Cold War paranoia that you don't necessarily need to do a secret invasion movie. Otherwise, you'd you'd really be retreading steps unless you made it fairly unique. So yeah, I'm glad that they went down the route of the scrolls being good. I saw a pretty interesting one on like one of the Avengers cartoons, which was pretty good. Um, which I think could work in the setting, which is just like it, it's not in the past, obviously, but like um, it would just be sort of uh, depending on how Avengers Four sort of fixes itself. Uh, like if they're all split up, like. It could just be, like, because there's just a bunch of confusion since there's, what, like, 50 people now in the Avengers or taking part in uh, saving the world. Uh, It just becomes confusing as to, like, whether somebody's really who they say they are. Which, I don't know. I don't think that would be too uninteresting. Yeah, but it still just be very hard to do. It's, yeah, thinking about it. Oh, I see. Thinking about it. No, uh, compared to Winter Soldier, because they kind of did secret invasion in a movie yeah, without it, it being a secret invasion movie it was it was not Nazis. humans the whole time <laughs> yeah it was robert redford the whole time anyway we should probably uh w- 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 did you want to say that thing about trailers oh uh, yeah so everyone before captain marvel was coming out said all the trailers looked either bland or boring or just they just didn't want to see the movie because of the trailers. But then once you see the movie, it gives you a much better appreciation for the trailers, which is a very weird thing to do with the trailer. Yeah. Because they don't show anything in those trailers. There's just... It's it's the opposite of a blockbuster movie trailer. Like Like, they don't show anything compared to when other movies show... A lot of stuff, like how in the Aquaman trailer, they showed a whole scene from the movie. Um, <laughs> um, and the stuff that they showed in the trailer was only like the first 30 minutes to an hour of the film. Yeah, it's pretty and much And so like after that, scene, it was like... see stuff from the trailer at the beginning of the movie. It was a nice, just... It was nice having solid trailers that may not get you excited for the movie but just don't give everything away yeah it's and they're actually improved by the movie it's, it's good. interesting that people are constantly asking for less less shown in trailers but then when you get something like this then people are like uh trailers doesn't seem very interesting because it doesn't have a lot of that third act action the the, the biggest reactions i saw from the trailer were uh just the couple of shots that you get of her like fully powered up from towards the end of the movie uh, which are the only real things that you get, like the small tastes of the end. Uh, well, I, I think that's honestly how you should do trailers. Where it's just, uh, yeah, it is how you should do you a trailer. You do show the first half hour. Mm. But that's not what a lot but of yeah, movies it, it do. It doesn't <laughs> generally happen, regardless. Uh, but that's the thing. Because people are so used to like being shown the whole movie, people are confused. Because yeah. they, of course, without seeing it, you wouldn't know that that's I know. from only the that's first just, hour. I'm, that's so. just what I'm... <laughs> What I'm saying is that it's supposed to be a marketing tactic, but now it's inefficient to do it the way that people want because people won't understand if it's what they want. Exactly. Yeah. It's the Blade Runner well, 2049 I mean, if effect. If you just sort of keep doing Of it, showing nothing and then no one goes to watch your movie even though it's brilliant. <laughs> so, okay. yeah. Anyway. You're a bit bitter there. Um, yeah, just a bit bitter. I'm quite annoyed that more people didn't go see Bleep Runner 2049. Anyway. Did you see that there's an anime um, Blade Runner? Yep. It came out before Blade Runner. It's really well done. It's done by the Cowboy Bebop guy. 
Uh, yeah, it's Shinichiro Wantabe is the creative, whatever. Awesome. Nice. Uh, but that, that anime was really good. And there's two other shorts they released before the movie came out that were really good as well. Just uh, that whole... Damn it. It was really good. Anyway, let's get back to Captain Marvel. Um, ben, did you have any points you wanted to bring up in terms of like just plot plot points or like the way they did characters or anything like that? Uh, yeah, there are a couple things that I wanted to mention. Um, one of them being the the thing that I, I alluded to before that I found impressive was the um, the full power up scene, uh, being similar to Guardians Two, uh, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume that, Two. They had the um, that scene in Volume Two with the chain playing. Yeah, they, and then they play the him chain. getting pumped up. And he basically oh, stole so like a god for a scene. And I think it's really interesting that you finally get this sort of Superman character in Marvel. Marvel has had a lot of really high-powered characters. Thor's been really high up there. Um, and I think people really enjoyed seeing that in Ragnarok and Infinity War with just Thor going all out with just powerful, really awesome action. Because something that I think is should be a draw to super or not should be but would be a draw to superheroes if marvel used it more is just sheer power in terms of an action movie like you do get that with the others but you'd think that like it's it's kind of like it says something about superhero movies um that people enjoy them so much despite the fact that they're not really harnessing their full potential as action movies like they are but also in terms of action movies that's the disney standard. problem yeah i guess it's not disney, disney uh dc oh, okay. oh the dc problem sorry where they have super overpowered characters and they do kind of show all the flashy explosions and stuff, but they're just not I get, yeah, well I guess characterized. The, the problem with DC is it it it's just I, it's not the problem with DC. It's the problem with I have with a lot of the DC movies is a lot of these big fights take place in somewhere just incomprehensible. Like the Wonder Woman fight at the airport, you know it's at an airport, but then like once the fight starts, everything is fire and black, and it's just a it's just like a CGI wasteland or something. The same thing happened in Batman vs Superman. And I just, I, I didn't, Man of Steel. It didn't register in my brain how the environment that they're fighting in turned into something that is completely unrecognizable. It's just like, it's either saying, look at how much destruction there is, or we couldn't be bothered to design the things around them as they fight. Um, okay, something I can say for Captain Marvel is how well they, they, they uh, characterize their scenes. Like, like they get that. At every step of the way through action scenes, you knew where the characters were in relation to each other. Mm. So there's a scene in the trailer where um, Captain Marvel is flying up and shooting lasers out of her fists, blowing up a bunch of ships. <laughs> like you can easily tell so where she's going in like her trajectory and stuff. And it's just not like this mess of CGI. It's the fucking coolest scene. It's so good. But just the way they do action... And choreography in Captain Marvel, especially with like some of the, the 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 fist fighting stuff, is that that's some some John Wick stuff right there. It's really good. Yeah, I did have a little trouble keeping track in terms of what the camera was doing sometimes, but I think the um, but that could have been where we were in the cinema. Into, yeah, that's true. We were sitting really close to the front, so it's, it's a diff- bit difficult to tell. We could have just been like looking up at a weird angle. But yeah, uh, the the scene where she f- finally powers up and fights all the the Kree and they play just a girl. Um, it may have been like super on the nose to play just a girl. However, uh, fuck that. It was awesome. It's fuck it. Yeah, <laughs> that song is great. She's uh, she's holding a Fonz lunchbox while fighting <laughs> the Star Force, and it's she so is good. <laughs> just overpowered. Unapolo- unapologetically and you know Gwen Stefani's just fucking <laughs> jamming <laughs> it's uh, I really enjoyed that scene I know some people won't because they go oh, it's the fact that they're using this song is just too feminist for me whatever um, that scene was really entertaining for me I almost cried just from how much I was enjoying watching that um, not because it was like oh, so beautiful it was just so fun just yeah. a solidly fun fucking movie Oh, yeah. so then once good. Yeah, once it gets into that third act, once she powers up, and it's just it is unapologetic with how powerful she is. I think that's the strongest part of the movie, which is just really weird fun. because normally Marvel movies sometimes the third act is the weakest, like, some like in do, some yeah. some cases. But this is this is definitely not one of those cases. It 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 it, exempl- it, it makes the rest of the movie better with this 
amazing third act. Yeah, I think um, I felt the same way about Coco in that the um, the setup felt like I wasn't entirely certain where it was going with the setup. But once you get to the third act, you can definitely... Everything lands really well because they had that setup. Yeah. So, Nathan, do you think mm-hmm. you're going to watch the, the movie? Maybe. Um... I mean, I'm not altogether too interested, but I think that it would be an enjoyable watch. I'm just... It's its the first one where I know nothing about the character beforehand, so, like, I'm not really invested. Okay. Yeah. Well, they do um, a great job in getting you invested in a new character. I'd say it's the okay. strongest origin movie, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. Which is saying a lot, because um, I thought Iron Man was the best origin movie, but I think this might might go above Iron Man. It's it's that good, dude. Yeah, I, I'm just thinking about it. Yeah, Iron Man's the only one that's particularly strong other than like... I mean, Captain Guardians. America was pretty good and the the Guardians one, I remember being yeah, pretty good, but, but I haven't seen it in Captain a while. Captain sort of falls apart in the third part. Yeah, with Red Skull. And all oh, that. so does mm. Iron Man, really. It's just sort of I, fucking massive I honestly massive like the conclusion mech. to Iron Man. Um, like the last yeah, like scene's it, really good, it, it, but like the, the the final boss with Jeff Bridges, it was all right. The dude. Yeah. The dude. That's that's the next episode. Um, oh okay. Um, I I wasn't sure whether it was this episode, so I thought I might have been doing it. We've been doing this for an hour and a half. Uh, I've yeah, got a I feeling mean, it's going to be the next episode. Fair point. That <laughs> oh, shit we have. Okay. Yeah, but I mean, twenty minutes of it was just me running around trying. And I'm, um, it's all going in, yeah, yeah, baby. We're, we're, we're definitely <laughs> oh, putting cool. a bunch of that in. Oh no, <laughs> yeah, that's um, all good. What else? I did. Well, did you want to? You you had some points about the supreme intelligence. Yeah, uh, weird characterization of that, not. It's not a problem to change a character from the comics. Like I don't, I don't, I'm not going to say no. It's too inaccurate or something. But it is weird when the supreme intelligence in the comics is fairly unique as a character of that variety, in that it's an AI that is entirely logic based, and that's how the Kree society is basically run. It's based on um, the supreme intelligence analyzes every situation, and they make judgments based on statistics. Uh, and just like pure logic and it's kind of weird that it tries to manipulate her emotions and um that that just seems a, a little like I, I understand that you can do the character differently but it, it it's a little disappointing that they didn't that they didn't go for something that is fairly unique about the character in the comics they they kind of disregarded that and went for something that is a little more common yeah i mean i got i've got the feeling like, it's not a massive twist that the the Kree are bad guys, or like the the kind of bad guys in the end, but I feel like if they had like a robot AI as like the the supreme intelligence that would have semi given away it from the start, like they knew the the like it it would have been like the Kree in the end probably. I don't know. What that AIs are always evil. My okay. logic is undeniable. Rip vision. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> even an yeah. android can cry. Yes, bring it back around. Uh, it doesn't help that they reference Terminator in this movie. <laughs> I don't remember when um, Terminator. When when she steals the clothes and the guy's bike. Uh, yeah, I guess that is a reference to Terminator. I didn't even think about that. But yeah, I don't know. So, I, I agree. It, um, it shouldn't make a massive difference. Like if mm. they recharacterize it. Yeah, usually. I'm sure I haven't read much about the supreme intelligence. They like do. I haven't actually read much yeah. at all about Carol Danvers in general. Oh man, I I do like the character a fair bit. Um, she's had a turbid history, uh, but my general consensus on the character, thumbs up. I like her. Thumbs up. Is that two thumbs up. Yeah. Um, I've got the the Marvel the first. Like her first Marvel Now series, like the first volume of that. So the, I'm keen uh, to Kelly get into it. One who had a cameo in the movie. Yeah, I was right. I saw her and I was like, "Is that Kelly Sue DeConnick? And I looked it up, and it was. 
it's so good. Pretty She's, proud of recognizing yeah. that. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah. I'd like to so talk about you... the scrolls for a second. Sure. Okay. Just because they're they're like. It's nice that they changed them because they're they're generally the 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 bad guys yeah. in comics. Like like the, the whole the whole focus of Secret Wars is on this evil race of aliens has taken S- over the Avengers and stuff like Secret Invasion. Secret Did I say Wars Secret Invasion or Secret War? Really That's totally different. No. Secret Invasion. But I, I really liked sympathizing with the scrolls. Especially when because one of them is like, Ben Mendelsohn. Absolutely. He is just stand out. <laughs> he plays villains a lot, so it was really awesome that he was playing a villain who wasn't a villain. They're such interesting characters, and I hope they use them in like future movies. Like not necessarily in in, in Endgame, but like maybe in uh like a another Guardians movie or another Captain Marvel movie mm. or whatever they have planned for Phase 4. Just I want to see more more scroll mm. action. I, I definitely think don't add it to Endgame. I think we have too many like plot lines and people to be worrying about to add another alien it's race. Be like three I feel like that's a bit long. too much. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not. I'm saying it is. Then, I'm not making a joke. It, it is actually going to be. I know. I know. It is actually three hours long. So you have plenty of time. Yeah. Uh, then the other thing was no uh, the joke, scrolls in this. That will happen. Can we get Nova up in the mix, please? The, With the scrolls fighting the Kree? You remember um, how the two Vi's in the Tapestry Book 3? Uh, not particularly. The, two, the old one, Nixon uh, Vala? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it sort of makes me think of that, where it's like, you know, usually they're bad, but then it's like those two, because they're just shape-shifting, like, aliens really yeah um, or demons in this it reminds me a lot of that is it very similar or yeah it's it's kind of similar to that but like with, with in their case it's kind of because they're benevolent right like they're, they're, they're no the bad ones are just feral oh right yeah yeah oh um, they're the they're the wolf people right yeah yeah so that's right. Sorry, you, I, I'd I'd struggle I'd struggle to remember because I kind of got the events mixed up in my head, but it's kind of like that, like the the, like, I reckon the majority of scrolls are good people in this. It's not like a lot of them are feral, and these two are just like nice people. Yeah. So it, it's it's not quite that. It appears as though none well, of the ones no, it, were actually evil. Yeah. Oh. Well, it, it turns out that there's, there's, like, an entire race, and only the ones that, like, are in, are in like, human colonies are the bad ones, because they're the ones that are killing humans. So. Yeah. I'm only going to kill you I, if I, you put me near you. Well, no, that, it's, that's they Goose's hide because humans <laughs> hunt them since they think all of them are feral. Yeah. Uh, um, I think that's just the whole Cree thing. They think they're the perfect people and they want to get rid of impure races, kind of. Like, I think that's yeah. how the Kree works. That's how they kind of explained it in the movie. I think they're just an empire. I don't know. I, I don't, I don't just think Kree have some... It's weird. I, I, I don't know if it's different. Because they talked about are. wiping out with the accusers. Have, yeah. Like, they don't really have, like, a race superiority thing. It's more like the Kree empire is extensive and... They generally wipe out races that are threats. Uh, the Skrull were likely at one point a threat. In the comics, they certainly were. were. But the fact that they're sort of hunting down this um, this this race that is dying uh, in the movie seems to indicate that maybe maybe it is a race thing. I don't know. Maybe they're Hitlers. Maybe Jude Law is Hitler. Maybe. <laughs> I mean, he he was in okay. Fantastic Beasts too, so. He was. He played Dumbledore. Pretty conclusive. He was basically Hitler. <laughs> he's re- he's recruiting wow. child sol- soldiers and all that. So. That's the thing that he did. What year child is it in? Soldiers, fa- not just what Dumbledore. year is it in Fantastic? Uh, I don't know. I didn't watch it. 
Yeah, I didn't watch uh, it either. So, but he's good as Sherlock Holmes. <laughs> Dr. <laughs> Dr. John Watson, pretty much Hitler. Yeah. He was in the war. <laughs> <laughs> I Not covered right wars, movement. you know. Okay. I, are you... Are you guys done with this movie? I'm done with it. I never want to talk I mean, about it again. Yeah, and then I'm just never gonna. Actually, oh, wait. I do want to address it again because I'm seeing it on Saturday, and I want to see if I can find more details in it. See if it's see if you enjoy it know. more. Or I want to. I want to. F- I want. Yeah, I want to see if I can like formulate more um, mature, like, like better opinions about it, and see if we can. Like, go super in-depth about some bits and pieces. Because right now, it's, like, surface level, just super enjoyable. But I want to see if there's, like, another level within the movie. I do want to say, um, as know. a secondary to my opinion on the Supreme Intelligence, my opinion on Marvel, uh, interesting decision to uh, to just make Marvel a different character. Like, and they, the, the purpose of Marvel as a character in the movie... Uh, generally is the same as in the uh, comics although it almost treats them as if they weren't anywhere near as significant uh, as they were uh generally they come off respect as respectable but they it kind of mixes marvel with another character whose name i forget from the kelly suda comic series uh, like a, a sort of mentor of carol's which I find kind of weird because that's initially who I thought it was going to be when she was introduced. Um, but she does have the sort of, um, like the mentoring, yeah, mentoring sort uh, of role, trusts and respects. And Carol. like a, it's not romantic. Uh, there, there's a significant age difference, and I don't think Carol is uh, I th- interested in women. No, uh, it's not obviously I, a point. I think, of, it's but a, she has a. It's a good thing that they didn't. She has do a romance, huge actually. respect for this character. I'm I'm so glad there wasn't this dumb B plot with Carol and someone else. It was just like focusing on character development between like her and Fury and mm. her and her old friend and her and um Wils- Wilson Wilson Lawson Lawson sorry. Yeah. So oh, I, I thought that was a good decision the on their point. I wasn't talking about big Big, no. the movie with <laughs> Wilson the Volleyball. Remember <laughs> 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 when Big, Tom Hanks, go, wait a minute. Big was in the movie. It was behind it her. Was. When she was in the blockbuster, I was like, look, it's Big. Which is funny because um, that Shazam movie is a, a big, they're, they're saying it's like Big. <laughs> I kind of want to look at, see if I can see the movies that show up as she's walking through the bus blockbuster to see if it... Like, does some sneaky foreshadowing for the rest of the movie, or I think like the one some she picks up is nice Top references or something? N- it's um, I, I, it was uh, I don't think it was. Okay, I, it was blood, so I wasn't entirely certain. I'm not, certain, I'm not but sure. It, it looked like the Top Gun logo to me. This is a soup. I this this movie is very Top Gun. And I like yeah, it. Yeah, it's there's some, I mean, there's some good. There's some quality Top Gun. There's a there's a trench raid in it. Oh my days! It's so good. It's like Star Wars, but Marvel. You mean Disney? But you Disney. do realize that? Yeah, I know. Yeah. I know. So? Let me have it. Whoa, whoa, Let me whoa, have whoa, this wait, one, wait, Nathan. What, Nathan? Wait. What? What? What's that? Oh, this hot take. I I had no idea. Hey Matt, did you know? <laughs> did you know that Disney owns what? Marvel and LucasArts and also the Muppets? Uh, what? Does that mean Wait, the, Muppets the Muppets are going to be well. in the Avengers yeah. Endgame? Kermit's um, <laughs> Kermit's Kermit's Swedish chef character. Hulk. He's his cousin, I guess. That was a good joke, right? <laughs> no, Kurt, Kermit's the true form of the supreme intelligence. <laughs> Yeah, well, the true form of the supreme intelligence is green. Yeah, it's just a, this blob. It's like um, uh, Jack's character from Doctor Who. Jack, um, uh, you know, Captain the Jack? guy that becomes immortal. Oh yeah, face of Captain Bo. Jack. Face of Bo. It's kind of like that. 
He does look a lot like the face of Bowie out of Supreme Intelligence. Except green. Uh, except green, yeah. But not in the movie. So, uh, do you guys mind if I do like a five minute talk on connecting to last week about Get Out? Because I watched that over the weekend. Oh, you did? But yeah, so I watched it over the weekend. And I still agree with what I said last week, especially as I just listened to the podcast from last week. Um, that it's definitely the most interesting horror uh, concept that I've watched. Um, But I think there were a few plot points which I didn't quite like or get. The first of which was um, how the phone just cut out randomly, how that makes sense. It's been a while since I've seen it. You You mean how it it ran out of charge? No, because... No, because it didn't run out of charge because he still used it later without charging no. it. No, because the cleaner kept unplugging his phone, so it would run no, out No, I charge. know, but it, it, was, it was after he'd plugged it back in, and then it was later that night. And then it cut out? It could yeah. be... I don't know. They controlled the reception in the area? But that... Okay, Look, but that... I can't okay, explain that it to just you. Doesn't really I mean, don't remember. Sense. Yeah, I don't remember it being a significant plot point. I mean, he does tell his friend that he's, like, possibly in danger. That is such a weird thing. So, it's like, can I just do a quick five minutes on Get Out? No, Why it, does the phone cut out? Like, <laughs> it's, a weird, it's not, like, a very significant thing. It's not, like, an overarching opinion or something. You're just, like, a very specific detail that well, you want to question us about. I haven't seen the movie in forever. Why? Well, okay, well, I was just doing a few things that bothered me throughout the film. Because you guys, like, sort of did the ending, like, last week, mm-hmm. where he just sort of goes did on the Did you like the rampage. ending? Uh, yeah, I thought I liked the ending, except I didn't like how they explained the third phase without going into too much detail. I didn't like that explanation, to be honest. I the thought third phase? It, you mean, like, in the, the brain, uh, the, the transmutation trans- thing? Is that trans- Yeah, the, the brain transplant, I guess, if we're just... <laughs> I don't know. We've turned the brain into something. If we're just else. spoiling it, yeah, the, the <laughs> brain, brain transplant. Cause well, you already said he murders everyone, sort of... so you already spoiled it. Well, you guys said that last yeah, week. Yeah, but then if we already said that, and you're taking into account the fact that it was okay. spoiled last week, it's not like this is all one long continuous okay. thing. People can listen to this without listening to the one before. <laughs> but they should listen um, to the one before. Uh, so, I didn't like that because. It just doesn't make sense as to why they're so creepy throughout the film then. Because the, do, do the grandparents just not know how to act? Then? No. Like as in act like people? Well, this is the point that they're, <laughs> they're the, the kind of people that would the, the, brain transplant themselves into other human beings. They are a little creepy. <laughs> yeah, it's just they. the rest of the family seems pretty That normal. and they're part and of the family, except but they when, have to act like they're not. So it's not like... Remember when the daughter was eating cereal at, with a glass of milk. That was fucking creepy. Also, it's weird because... Yeah, but she'd already been revealed. They're not who they're supposed but to be. Because she spoke normally for no, half the film. But this is, this is the point. They're not who they're supposed to be. So he has certain assumptions about these people because he thinks... I am. It's, it's a weird kind of like assumption in terms of like, don't have assumptions of, of people based on their race because maybe they're not from that race, uh, which is kind of a weird thing to say. But I think it's more like they're not who they're supposed to be, so they don't act like normal people because both they're not normal people and they're these people who act differently to how you'd expect because they're not the people that they appear to be. We also have no idea about how the the surgery works and if it messes with the brain of the person who gets their brain transferred. It would. (laughs) It very, very likely would. Especially okay. since, well, either way, I just um, you know that the other people are still in there with uh, Lake Keith, you know our friend Lake Keith Stanfield. You uh, know he's still in there. You know, get out. He's the one who says not get Steinfeld. Out. <laughs> no, not Steinfeld. Mm. Not Seinfeld. Uh, uh, I also think that the girlfriend in that movie, uh, she should have like at least been nominated for an Oscar for uh, not what for, cut out. I don't know supporting. Uh, the girlfriend should be nominated for an Oscar. Oh, okay. Because I think she did 
excellent job on that. Uh, I just think she, like, passed it off really well. I wasn't even, like, suspecting her until a while in. Until the creepy serial scene? Or, like, when she... Like, you know... No, she was already revealed to be weird yeah. by then. That's, I, I just, that, I that, wasn't paying that attention, for me, so that, <laughs> It really got me. <laughs> that, <laughs> that elevated it to a, a next level. That, that was the truly horrifying bit when she was eating cereal wrong. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, the, it, was, it was at the first dinner scene where the brother's there, and the moment she's like, oh, uh, he was going to put you in a headlock, I was like, wait a minute, that means he's the guy from the beginning. Wait a minute, that means the whole family's in on it. Wait a minute, that means she's in on it. <laughs> I was like, oh, God. <laughs> okay. Think, okay, cool. It was just a lot of realizations all at once where I ended up spoiling half the film. I was like, oh, well, I guess Spoiled. it sort of takes away from it. to notice things whatever. like that. Did you... Has, had Danny seen it before? No, she hadn't. Really? So you were spoiling it for Danny? I didn't say it aloud. Wait, so you spoiled it for yourself? Yeah, that's what he was saying. Is As in, I figured it all out. I, I, I was... I, I guess. It's like, no, nah, it. <laughs> No, I just... I sort of wish that I... I hadn't. Like, I'm Angus I'm, I sort of wish that I boy did I feel like it would have been better. If I'm just very it had come smart. together a bit. I know smart. everything about the movies. <laughs> I'm, so I'm not saying I'm that. So smart. Genius. But like I don't know. I just I thought it was a bit odd because I don't know. I just didn't like it that I'd figured it out quickly because I thought that it would have been better paced if it was like I'd figured it out as the movie sort of revealed it. And thank you for listening to my TED talk. <laughs> um, <laughs> please be as smart as me. If, <laughs> movies. If, you don't, if you don't figure out what's happening within the first few scenes, then you're a loser. <laughs> <laughs> then you're stupid. Well, actually, actually, based on what I just said, you're a winner in that case. Uh huh. <laughs> so I guess don't. Be smart. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, Nathan's not particularly smart, so. I really don't know you what can't. the takeaway. It was a, you, you... it was a bad TED talk. <laughs> I mean, some of them. Uh... <laughs> Sam Hyde. <laughs> anything important you want to say, or just anything at um, all, Nathan? So, I guess in summary, for Get Out, I I think it was a really good film. I just think there were um, just, some really odd, just too odd easy. Bits where like he just next, wh- like it just seemed like he could have left. <laughs> it was all of them. Thank you, something. next. <laughs> it's going through that for that real <laughs> Agatha Christie twist, right? <laughs> Fucking, have you guys both seen Murder on the Orient? Yeah, I've seen multiple versions yeah. of it. It's, it's always uh, the same. Yeah, I, 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 like, hey, oh, I've seen this one. It's okay. all of them. <laughs> <laughs> it's all of them. <laughs> it's like at the end of Infinity War. Oh, huh? it's all of them. It's not my fault. It's like the how you uh, uh, how to host a murder party. The thing. how it's you met your like, mother. Oh, it, it was really all. It was all, really the all. The one who did it is really the person who actually but killed to, them, even though theoretically they. But all the way they do crime. it, it's like. But but it's just like to what degree did they commit the crime? Was it the person who stabbed them, or the person that gave them the knife? Or the person who then shot them after being stabbed? Okay. Um. But Nathan, any final thoughts on Get Out? Or on Captain Marvel? Um, uh, on Captain Marvel, I'd say I'd need to watch out of five. <laughs> need um, to watch. Hmm. That's, Good uh, that's <laughs> not a number. <laughs> um, he, he, you heard it here first. Get Captain out, Marvel uh, is a must watch. <laughs> Wait, did I did I actually cut out? Did it say I need to watch or it's did a, I, say I need, need to watch? watch. Said, yeah. Oh, okay. I wasn't sure whether you heard all of me. <laughs> um, I love you. And then, and then uh, get out. I, I think I don't know. I'd say about an eight and a half out of ten. Decent. That's a high score. That's it. That's a good high score. And on that, yeah, especially as I'm not a fan of horror. Especially because most of what you said was I really don't understand why that phone cut off. Which is a criticism. <laughs> it bugged me for the next like twenty minutes. I think it was it only twenty minutes. It prevented me from solving the movie. The movie. <laughs> <laughs> He'd already solved the movie at that point. Dude, I'm I'm in the TS fucking A. Very well. 
And on that note, <laughs> we'll finish there. So, uh, thank you guys so much for listening. We have passed 100 listens. That's right. 100 of you fucks listen to this podcast. Yeah, no, no, so, no. thank you very much for doing that. Um, Don't know whether you should refer to them that way. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> Good advice. So, <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much for listening it's been brilliant making these each week um captain marvel's great go see it get out it's always a banger just go watch it if you haven't and <laughs> rate us <laughs> <laughs> sorry just, Nathan, it's just a why banger. Are you not laughing <laughs> just it's just a banger <laughs> anyway he's just laughing in australianism um Rate us five stars on iTunes and Pocket Cast if you haven't already. It really helps us out. It pushes us up in those charts, and the more recognition you get, uh, the more recognition we get, the 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 bigger the fan base, and the the more people get to experience positivity on the interwebs, which is the goal of this podcast. So thank you guys again. Thank you, Ben. Thank you, Nathan, for joining me again this week. More of you fucks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, More positivity. You, you, you two fucks. <laughs> um, <sighs> just for the record, I'm kidding. Um, and <laughs> I'll see you all in the next episode.